What is up? Welcome to the Shot Town Native Sports Podcast. I am Zach. This is my co-host Sam, and today I'm here with former Bears guard Ted Larson. How are you doing today, Ted? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. All right, Sam. You can you can uh, go ahead and start with the first question. For sure. How have you been doing during quarantine, man? I know it's been an unfortunate time for everyone. So, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy? Honestly, I've been staying staying pretty busy, and it's kind of been status quo for me and the family. I mean, we homeschool our kids. So they haven't really – nothing's changed with them. You know, we live in Phoenix, which is like a fantastic place to be in the spring and, and summer. So the weather's been perfect to be outside and, and enjoy the outside. And then I've, I've been busy trying to wrap up uh, another undergrad degree, actually, on, through the online uh, distance education. So I've been staying pretty busy. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. All right, so what made you want to start playing football? Uh, so I, I mean, I wasn't, my parents didn't let me play football until I was in high school. I was, I was kind of too big to play with my age group and, and pop Warner. And then by the time, uh, I, I think I was over the weight limit in like sixth or seventh grade. So I had to wait until I was in high school. Uh, but I, I always wanted to play. My dad played in college and my older brother played and I was a big kid. So it's like soccer and, and basketball and baseball are cool, but let's, let's play a sport where you can use your size. You, so you kind of any- always had a love for the sport, right? Kind of always had a love for that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think having it uh, be one of those things where I, I couldn't play and so I really wanted to play uh, really motivated me. And then once I had a little bit of su- success, I tried to uh, – I kind of just made it made my love for it grow exponentially. That's you, cool. got any, you got any tips for any inspiring high school football players out there that want to be in your position and play that NFL? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's obviously a long path and you, you know, you got to break it up and, and you can't eat the whole pie, you know, in one bite. So you got to kind of piece by piece. But, uh, I think, I mean, having a, having a good solid, uh, career in high school is, is kind of the first step. And, and if, and if you have the right size and speed and, and playing ability, then, then you'll play that next level of college. And then if you, if you can go on from there, I mean, it's, it's all about kind of staying focused, putting in the work and, and then, and then. Some time to play, you got to play well. That's awesome. When so, when you're choosing your college career, and so what made you? What stood out to you and made you choose NC State? So I played defensive line mainly in high school. Well, I wanted to play defensive line in college. So they had the number one defense in the nation the year before I went there. They had, I think, three first round defensive line picks that first year I was there. So they were they were very heavily. Uh, defensive uh, focus school and and they had a lot of talent and a lot of success and and the, the, and the one one of the other factors was the coach that was recruiting me was was from my hometown and had played uh d-line in college as well for chuck Amato. that's awesome up and on a lot. so you got drafted sixth round in 2010 by the new england patriots can you describe your emotions when you got drafted yeah i mean i, I no one wants to get everybody wants to get drafted earlier. So when I got drafted in the sixth round, uh, I kind of knew I had an uphill battle to make the team. And I ended up uh, getting cut, but I made Tampa's team, basically. They picked me up on waivers. Uh, so so I, I think being a sixth-round pick, you know, you got you to gotta really play well and be in the right fit, right situation. Luckily, I was able to, to make Tampa's roster. But uh, sure, I was excited to get drafted, but I knew that was just kind of the first step in the process. Mm-hmm. What kind of obstacles did you face on your way to the NFL? What kind of obstacles do you face today? So, I would say I I had only played offensive line briefly in college. Like I said, I, I went in as a defensive lineman and mainly played defensive line and, and switched late in my career. So I was just I mean honestly I was still learning the position, uh, still learning the position of center and then I had, I'd been asked to play a little bit of guard so I mean it, it honestly took me I'd, I'd say three or four years until I kind of knew what I was actually doing and, and could explain it and, and and knew it thoroughly so just understanding the position and and then being a guy who's maybe a little undersized or a little uh maybe not the best athlete I, I kind of had to fa- uh, face that as well. So you played in a lot of stadiums I'm guessing in the NFL it- out of all of them, if you had to choose one, what is the coolest NFL stadium you've played in? Yeah, I mean, I've had to play. I've actually gotten to play in every every stadium so far, uh, even stadiums that are no longer. You know, I played in Candlestick in San Francisco before they get rid of that. But I mean, my, to be honest, my favorite stadium 
is uh, Soldier Field. <clears throat> I mean, just yeah. the, the the history there. I mean, it's right there on the on Lake Michigan. It's downtown, and uh, and and since they you know they put in the suites and everything, it looks it looks pretty cool. But I mean, the fans are awesome, and and then you got you know the the grass for an offensive lineman is perfect. It slows it almost slows down the defense and kind of. Uh, it's, it's suited for offensive line play, so can't. Yeah. What's not to love about it? What was your most memorial, mo- memorable moment in the NFL? Uh, I would probably say, uh, in 2015, we made a pretty good run when I was with the Arizona Cardinals. We went to the NFC Championship, and that was the the first. That was second year I'd been to the playoffs. First year we had won a playoff game, so that was a pretty successful team and and a, and a pretty good team and. Probably my most uh, memorable year. And I believe that game was against the Packers, right? Yeah, that was that was the first game. We oh, beat yeah, the Packers. Game, yeah. <clears throat> we had a first round bye, then we beat the Packers, and then we got uh, beat pretty badly by the Carolina Panthers. So so you played against uh, – you played with five teams in your career. Who was one teammate you especially liked playing alongside? Well, uh, Bobby Massey I played with a bunch in, in Arizona for two years. And then we also played together in Chicago. Uh, we we trained together in the off season, and 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 you know I've been to his wedding. He's he knows my kids, so we've developed a pretty pretty close relationship. But I mean, over over time, it, it's kind of shifted. You know, that you play with guys in 2010, 2011, and and they're no longer in the league. So uh, after a ten year career, you you kind of you know you go in phases with with guys. But but Bobby Massey's a guy who stands out. All right, man, how would you describe the culture of playing with the Bears in Chicago? And also tell me about living in Chicago. What's life like being a Bears player in Chicago? Yeah, I guess it depends. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I was there with uh, Fox and then uh, Nagy. So it's kind of two different operations. But I think when you play for a team with that much history and, and that big a fan base, there's expectations. And, and when you don't meet those expectations, uh, you know, there's obviously disappointment. But, I mean, to play in front of Chicago in – in that city, it's awesome. I mean, like I said, the stadium is, is awesome. We love we, – we lived up in Lake Forest near the facility, which, like, my kids absolutely love living there and, and, and having – hanging out by the lake and, and the downtown there and, you know, when it snows. So we, we really enjoy Chicago. And, and when we get to go downtown, we enjoy that as well. So it's – for someone who's played, uh, you know, six years in, in Florida and two years in Arizona, being in Chicago – it's actually a nice change to get out of the sun. Yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a big change. I mean, especially in what December, November game. I'm sure that's really, really harsh to play in there. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like the cold weather that <laughs> doesn't bother me. So if it bothers everybody else, it's almost kind of like an advantage, you know? Yeah. So I know you said that you're uh, in college right now and you have kids and you're, you homeschool them. But uh, have you been doing anything else to stay busy during quarantine? Uh, you know, I've, I've been big. Uh, kind of get it, got into mountain biking since I've been out in Arizona. So I, I try to do that once or twice a week. Uh, you know, and, and I enjoy reading whenever I'm not busy with, with schoolwork. So, that, I mean, those are probably my two big hobbies in the off season. I, you know, I love to fish. Uh, you know, being in Florida, I spent six years there. So that that's something I don't get to do as much in Arizona, but, but I've, I've definitely been staying busy with, uh, with reading and biking. You catch a lot of good fish down there in Florida. Yeah, you know, I had a I had a couple of boats, and and it was it was really something I enjoyed. I grew up in Florida, so I mean that's there's not a not a lot to love about Florida, you know, if you've been other places. But the outdoors there and the stuff they have there on the water is is pretty special. Cool, that's cool. All right, man, that's all the questions we have for you today. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, thank you for coming on, Ted. We really appreciate it. This is a big yeah, deal. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.